This is Twit. Yeah, this is on the need to really, in all bold caps, trust every web browser extension we install. This sobering research has recently come from researchers at, what do you know, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. As part of their exploration into what a malicious web extension can and might do, even today, when operating under the more restrictive Manifest V3 protocol that Chrome introduced, which has since been adopted by most browsers, these researchers discovered that their proof-of-concept extension is able to steal plain text passwords from a website's HTML source. And wait till you hear which websites were vulnerable, found to be vulnerable. Thanks to the unrestricted access to the DOM tree, that, you know, that's the web page's document object model, which is organized logically as, as a tree structure. It describes the document, but more recently, I mean, everything that you see on the page is in this document object model. It's, it's just like, it's a, it is it is the web page and containing stuff you don't see on the page more importantly right hidden, yes hidden yes fields. yes yeah yes so so that's what the browser uses to drive its renderer and all of the scripting that it also runs so they demonstrated that the coarse grained permission model under which we're all now operating um which, which also covers browsers text input fields violates the principles of least privilege. They found that numerous websites with millions of visitors, and I'm, I'm just, I, I'm not going to stomp on the, the, <laughs> the news of which websites we'll get there in a minute, because, but boy, uh, including some Google and Cloudflare portals, store passwords in plain text within the HTML source of their web pages. Just sloppiness. Thus allowing for their ready retrieval by extensions. So their research paper is titled Exposing and Addressing Security Vulnerabilities in Browser Text Input Fields. This is what they explain in their paper's abstract. They said, in this work, we perform a comprehensive analysis of the security of input text fields in web browsers. We find that browsers coarse grained permission model violates two security design principles, least privilege and complete mediation. We further uncover two vulnerabilities in input fields, including the alarming discovery of passwords in plain text within the HTML source code of web pages. To demonstrate the real world impact of these vulnerabilities, we design a proof of concept extension, leveraging techniques from static and dynamic code injection attacks to bypass the web store review process. Anyway, in other words, they snuck it in. Our measurements and case studies reveal that these vulnerabilities are prevalent across various websites with sensitive user information, such as passwords, but not restricted to. We're talking social security numbers, credit card numbers, you name it. Exposed in the HTML source code of even high traffic sites like Google and Cloudflare we find that a significant percentage, 12.5% of extensions, possess the necessary permissions to exploit these vulnerabilities and identify 190 extensions that directly access password fields. Finally, we propose two countermeasures to address these risks, a bolt-on JavaScript package for immediate adoption by website developers, allowing them to protect their sensitive input fields, and a browser-level solution that alerts users when an extension accesses sensitive input fields. Our research highlights the urgent need for improved security measures to protect sensitive user information online. Okay, now, 
The Manifest V3 protocol prohibits extensions from fetching code hosted remotely that could help evade detection and prevents the use of eval statements that lead to arbitrary code execution. However, as the researchers explained, Manifest V3 does not introduce a security boundary between extensions and web pages, so the problem with content scripts remains. To test Google's Web Store review process, they created a Chrome extension capable of password grabbing attacks and then uploaded it to the extension's repository. Their extension posed as a GPT-based assistant that can capture the HTML source code when the user attempts to log in on a page by means of a regex, abuse CSS selectors, you know, uh, uh, the web page CSS, to select target input fields and extract user inputs using the dot value function, and perform element substitution to replace JavaScript-based obfuscated fields with unsafe password fields, all of which they explain in their research doc. The extension does not contain obvious malicious code, so it evades static detection and does not fetch code from external sources, which, of course, would be dynamic injection. So it is fully Manifest V3 compliant. This resulted in the extension passing the review, being accepted on Chrome's web store, so the security checks failed to catch the potential threat, which in this case was very real. Now, of course, the researchers followed strict ethical standards to ensure no actual data was collected or misused. They deactivated the data receiving server component while only keeping the element targeting server active. Also, the extension was set to unpublished at all times so that it would not gather many downloads. And it was promptly removed from the store following its approval. That is, as soon as they saw that it got in and were able, were able to ve verify that this thing, you know, was able to slip by. Okay. Subsequent measurements showed that from the top 10,000 websites, roughly 1,100, that's where the 12.5% figure came from, are storing user passwords in plain text form within the HTML document object model and extensions script have access to the document object model thus access to plain text passwords so this is a fundamentally insecure design the designers of those 1100 websites that is the 1100 out of the top 10,000 that these guys looked at, the designers of those websites either wrongly assume that the contents of their pages document object model are inaccessible, which is not true, or they never stop to consider it. In, a, in addition, another 7,300 websites from that same set of the top 10,000 were found vulnerable to DOM API access and direct extraction of the user's input values. Several of those, including widely used ad blockers and shopping apps, boast millions of installations. So this thing is widespread. Okay, now is everybody sitting down? <laughs> Notable websites lacked the required protection and are thus vulnerable right now. Those include <clears throat> gmail.com. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> which has, oh, nobody huh? uses that. Thank goodness. <laughs> Holy cow. Which has plain text passwords stored in HTML source code. What? Cloudflare.com. Cloudflare plain text passwords in HTML source code. Passwords Facebook. to what? The user's passwords what? Are, are available in plain text in the HTML source. Facebook.com. User inputs can be extracted via the DOM API. Citibank.com. User inputs can be extracted via the DOM API. Wow. 
irs.gov. Social security numbers are visible <gasps> in plain text form on the web page source code. Capital1.com. Social security numbers are visible in plain text form on the web page source code. Usenix.org. Same thing. Social security numbers. Amazon.com credit card details, including the security code and zip code, are visible in plain text form on the page's source code. Available to all extensions. Yes, it is that bad. Holy cow. The version 3 manifest was a trade-off. Due to the way the industry's existing websites and popular extensions had been coded, Further limiting extension use would have broken too much existing code, so it wasn't done. When a Google spokesperson was asked about this, they confirmed that they're looking into the matter, <laughs> you think, and pointed to Chrome's extension security FAQ that, that does not consider access to password fields to be a security problem. Quote, as long as the relevant permissions are properly obtained, unquote. Right. Let's hope this gets fixed soon. I can understand, though, why you need access to the DOM if you're an extension. I mean, that's kind of what an extension That's what you does. do. And that's Gore Hill exactly has complained about do. Manifest 3 make, making it impossible to do uBlock Origin because yep. it, even the little restrictions that it offers uh, make yep. it hard to do ad blocking. Yep. So I understand... Uh, Boy, this it is, is a, a catch. It is a catch twenty two. Yeah. Yes. The web and, was and really not designed to be secure. I mean, that's what we're nope. fundamentally nope. seeing. And and we we've, we've tried to turn web web into web apps as if they're the same. And you know, we're we've stretched our browsers uh, yeah. mightily in order to do that. In the takeaways section, uh, five point three of their paper, they write. This is a systemic issue. They said, our measurement studies on the top 10,000 websites show that we could extract passwords from all the login pages with passwords. The widespread presence of these vulnerabilities indicates a systemic issue in the design and implementation of password fields. And they talk specifically about password managers. Now, think about that. We take it for granted, right? But any and all password managers must by design be a third-party extension which has direct access to any website's password fields. They said under role of password managers. The widespread use of password managers may partially explain the prevalence of vulnerabilities where password values are obscured but can be accessed via JavaScript. These tools enhance the user's experience by automating the process of entering passwords, storing the encrypted passwords, and later auto-filling these fields when required. This functionality reduces the cognitive load on users and encourages the use of complex, unique passwords for each site, thereby enhancing overall security. However, for password managers to function effectively, they require access to password fields via JavaScript. This necessity creates an inherent security vulnerability. While the password fields may appear obscured to users, any JavaScript code running on the page, including potentially malicious scripts, can access these fields and read their values. This interaction between password managers and these vulnerabilities presents a trade-off between usability and security. While password managers improve usability and promote better password practices, their operation necessitates JavaScript access to password fields that inherently creates a security risk. Essentially, you know, these guys just demonstrated that you don't even have to be a password manager to obtain password manager level access. And they were able to successfully sneak their universal password, ex password extraction extension code past Google's incoming filters without any trouble. Mm. So 
their 26 page paper is marvelously clear and none of this stuff is fancy or complex its content would be entirely accessible to anyone familiar with modern web page construction and operation any of our listeners who are responsible for the design of their organization's secret accepting web pages might well benefit from making sure their own sites are protected I've included the link to the research PDF for anyone who's interested, and to improve its availability, it's also this week's GRC shortcut. So it's you can find it at grc.sc slash 938, grc.sc slash 938, uh, and the PDF uh, link is also in the show notes. So this is important. Uh, again, kind of in retrospect, it's like, well, duh, of course, password managers need to be able to do this. It turns out it's not just password managers that can. They found 190 uh, existing extensions that had this capability. And I don't think there's 190 password managers out there. So a lot of apps are doing it, and they created one and slipped it past Google <laughs> that could do it too. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. It's midweek, and you really want to know even more about the world of technology. So you should check out Tech News Weekly, the show where we talk to and about the people making and breaking the tech news. It's the biggest news. We talk with the uh, people writing the stories that you're probably reading. We also talk between ourselves about the stories that are getting us even more excited about tech news this week. So if you're excited, well, then join us. Head to twit.tv slash TNW to subscribe.